Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort in creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. We've got a (laughs) Tucson-sized creep today, a desert creep from the 60s. This is a famous Charlie killer. There's Manson, there's Starkweather, and now there's this asshole we're talking about today, Charlie Smitty Schmid. But before we get there, we do have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Yes. Housekeeping. So housekeeping. Here, here we are. We do have a basic. We, let me just start with this. We are the podcast that talks about creeps from the past to the present. We always end the show with someone who's not a creep. So you go away feeling a little bit more hopeful about the world than you went in. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. We do have a basic Facebook page. We don't use it. It's just a place for people to complain about our language. You should know we use salty language on this program. Fuck yeah. (laughs) We have a private Facebook group. It's What a Creep podcast group. You do have to ask to join. If you get in, you have to be nice. (laughs) Yeah, please read the rules of engagement. We we are sticklers for those. We do enforce them. They are not there for your amusement. (laughs) They are there to be followed. But we are a great group, and it's actually a really amazing group of people. We keep it tight, y'all. Absolutely. And we talk mm-hmm. about creeps and non-creeps and all that good stuff there as well. You could follow us on Twitter at CreepPod because somebody had What a Creep for over 10 years and never used it. Creep! We're on Instagram at What a Creep. And you can just send us an old-timey email if you'd like to. What a Creep Podcast at gmail.com. We have some stickers if y'all would like some stickers. Wherever you are in the world, as long as you're on this yep. planet, we'll get them out to you. <laughs> And if you're not on this planet, what's your planet like? Yeah, please. Is can, it better than here? Can, I'm like, can can we go there? <laughs> Do they have air and water? That's pretty much what I need. Seriously, it's all we want. So do you want to tell Cle- them about the website and yes. our, our sources that are listed always on the website? Yes. You could go to whatacreeppodcast.com and it's everything you ever want to know about our podcast, but we're afraid to ask. There is a link to our merch shop where you can get t-shirts and journals and tote bags and awesome, awesome stuff. Face masks, because by the way, that's still a thing. The pandemic's not really over for a lot of people y'all so you could get face masks and there are links to all of our sources yay for every episode so ignore the haters that say they don't do their research we literally have links to all of our resources and we list them in every show but yes there you go so please do that there's also a link to our Patreon page. You want to tell them about that, Margo? I certainly do, Sonia. Our first four seasons are on the Patreon wall. We also put out two bonus episodes a month. We just did one yesterday, and it was all about comedians and comedy who are creeps and not creeps. And (laughs) it was quite a discussion that we had. We also put out a newsletter. It's just a way to help us just pay the bills. It's to pay the hosting yes. costs and for the website costs and things like that. We're not getting rich from this, but yeah. <laughs> if you're like, I don't want to do that because I don't want to support Sonia's child support payments. We don't use it for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate everybody who does. And I'd like to say a special yes. thank you to M. Williams, Tanya, Jessica, Carolyn and Charlene, all of them just joined recently. <gasps> on Patreon Thank page. you. And all of awesome. you, once again, if you would like some stickers, whether you're a Patreon member or not, just shoot us an email. What a creep podcast at gmail.com. And also remember, we are always looking for creeps and non creeps, your suggestions. It's very helpful to us. I think I've gone through everything, Sonia. Have I? Yes, that sounds like everything and okay. more. All right, so we're going to talk about our show today. I got this idea because I watched an episode of a show that I super love. My mom and I used to just like watch the shit out of this show. It was called A Crime to Remember. And it was on, oh. the, it's on, it was on the Discovery Channel, I think, of the, or Lifetime, one or the other. It's now mm-hmm. streaming on Amazon. There's like four seasons. And they just take a famous crime and they kind of act it out. 
It's like Dateline. What's the other one I'm thinking of with Robert's? Uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Right. But with really good acting, a good production, not like okay. you know, the 80s stuff. There was a story in there about a murderer, murderer in Tucson, <laughs> and his name was Charles Smitty Schmidt. And I heard the story and I thought, this is interesting. I need to do some more research about this guy. And then I started doing research. And this is one of the most bananas things <gasps> I've ever read in my life. And let me just say this. Speaking of life, Life Magazine wrote a cover story about Charles Sh- Charles Smitty Schmid, March 4th, 1967. And they're describing teenagers in Tucson that were basically animals. They like to just race cars, do drugs, have sex, and they would never snitch on anyone. Even a 22-year-old pedophile creep who wears heavy makeup and killed one of their schoolmates. Damn. Yes. This is a story about a man dubbed the Pied Piper of Tucson who acted like a murderous Wooderson. That's a dazed and confused joke, I'm telling you. Yes, yes. He's an older guy hanging out with kids, not saying, all right, all right, all right, but just kind of... (laughs) Where are the girls at? I need to kill somebody. Yeah, I get older and they stay the same age. Exactly. And then I murder them. Trigger warnings, murder, sexual assault, and animal abuse. I will oh, no. I'll give you a okay. warning about my sources, Life Magazine. All the links are, by the way, in the show notes. Mm-hmm. There's Life Magazine. There's just a PDF of the article. There's also a Life Magazine link with all the photos. Photos are very interesting. The reporter went out for a month, took pictures of a lot of people, and interviewed the friends of Charles Schmid, and then basically was slut-shaming all the girls, all the women that were in there. It was really offensive. Cool. Cool reporting, dude. It was all about teenage wasteland, basically. That was his whole point. It's all teenagers. They suck now. And this is like a thing that's been going on for over 50 years. Kids these days. I was having this argument with somebody. They're like, when we were kids, we te- we didn't have the internet. We didn't have video games. We didn't need that. I'm like, yeah, we needed it. It was really fucking boring without it. <laughs> we had our things me? too, by the way. We did. We all ha- every, every generation of kids has their thing. Yes. They have their thing. Like, by the way, I'm like, I don't know how old this person was, but I 100% had an Atari 2600 and I was obsessed with my Atari 2600 and my Walkman. I was also a- obsessed. With- yes. Yeah. And all my records and shit like that. But I would have yes. loved the internet back then. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then, you know, people older than that are like, kids these days, we didn't have TV back in my day. Well, good for you. So like, what? We have- <laughs> so what? Everybody has their thing. It's fine. Right. Deal with it. So that's two Life Magazine links. There's a a site called Mel Magazine, which did a really good story about him. There's the Wikipedia page, of course. There's the book The Pied Piper, Bloodlands, which is on Amazon by Harold Schechter. Here's the title of You'll Love This. L.A. Squealer, the (laughs) insider's account of the Pied Piper murders by Richard Bruns. We talk about him in this episode. Mm -hmm. History Channel. Tucson citizen. Okay. I wish you had done your research. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me paint the picture first of Tucson. After the war, there was what was called the baby boom generation, and they queefed out a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> queefed out. <laughs> And okay. It, it, the popula- okay, boomers. <laughs> okay, boomers, and you're queefing. <laughs> but they moved out to the suburbs, and they got jobs, and the women that used to work now stayed home. It used to be the norm that everybody in the family worked. As soon as you were old enough to work, and then you contribute to the family fund, it wasn't right. norm to go to college. You know, that Correct. was an elite thing. If you were lucky, you did that. Either, either you went to a trade school, you just worked right out of high school. In the 1950s, there was this economy that was like, imagine this, like one parent could afford to take care of a family. And so the other one mm-hmm. could stay home. What happened was there was television. And yes, of course, we had the scare of the Russians and things like that, for sure. But mostly kids were safe. Teenagers got bored. And yes, this is my my point. You don't want bored teenagers anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. It's it, it's a it doesn't mess. matter what. Ge- yeah, no, it doesn't matter what generation you're talking about. Bored teenagers cause a lot to, of havoc, lead to mayhem. It's the hormones. 
It's the, you know, they're developing brains and bodies. All kinds of shit happens. What was happening in Tucson was it was this desert town in Arizona. It was, uh, there's two mountains that separate it. These kids would, they went from like sock hops and like a, you know, happy days kind of thing until all of a sudden it was the town exploded. It went from 50,000 to 300,000 in just a wow, few years. That's, that's a huge amount of growth. And the kids would go up and down the main strip in their cars. They drink, smoke pot, would make out, and then that would lead to parties, and then that would lead to sex sometimes. And sometimes girls would get sent away for a few months living with an aunt or a cousin for some <laughs> yes. reason. Yes. It's so random, so weird. I'm sure nothing happened on that trip. Exactly. This is why we need sex ed, by the way. If, if you can, yes. in case you're wondering... Tucson had an issue, had a problem. I mean, the teenagers were getting rowdier and rowdier, and then just each generation wanted to outdo the one before it. And in the early 60s, a lot of kids, it was so wild that supposedly, this is what the Tucson police said, they had reports of 50 teens a month as runaways. Damn. That's like two a day. I'm like, is that possible? Were they really runaways or were they just, they weren't home by six (laughs) o'clock? Well, that's also like, there's something like that. Was that the problem? And cops wouldn't do anything until it was like a week. Like they they were just like, oh, she ran off with her boyfriend or she, you know, is going to Vegas or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So in this atmosphere, we have a guy named Charles Schmid. He was born July 8th, 1942. He was adopted by a very wealthy family who took care of him. And there's a lot of people, for some reason, trying to demonize adoption and trying to say, Mm. like, there's a large percentage of serial killers that were adopted. I'm like, no, there isn't. It's for some reason they try to do this with him. But they can't understand is that he was this born in a very nice family. The parents were wealthy. They ran this like old folks home and Mm -hmm. made good money doing it. A lot of people retired to Tucson, too, because of the weather. He was given everything he wanted. Mm-hmm. I sent you a picture of him. Yeah. And it creeped you out. Yep. Imagine all that crap not happening to him. So you guys could check in our Instagram. We have a whole thing about Charles Schmidt. He's pretty handsome on his own. He's very pretty eyes. He was obsessed with Elvis Presley when he was a teenager and kind of never lost it. And yeah. he started taking his light brown hair and dyeing it jet black. He started with that. In high school, the one good thing he was good at was gymnastics. He was five foot three. He was Charles Manson size. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna size shame anyone. You can't do anything about that. Yeah, I mean, it's that's just the size you are. Yeah. He was very, very self conscious about that. Yes, it's by the way still a thing. Yes, of course still, it is. D- yeah, dudes are still like always lying about their height, and yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, the way women are about their weight, men and, are about their height, and, and people are about their age. <laughs> yes, <laughs> true. His parents give him everything. He gets in trouble in his senior year. He steals some from tools from the shop class, and then he just never goes back. And he didn't have to because he lived in a little casita, a little house next to his parents' house. They gave him a house when he was 17. Oh, my God. Everything. Right. He had parties all the time. Shocking. Yes. People came over. The, they're drinking. I think like the uh, the age to buy beer at the time was like 18. So he was right. He was on easy street. And like I said, he was handsome and he had kind of a chip on his shoulder and he loved the younger girls. Part of that is because... He's five foot three and he's a dropout. <laughs> An older woman is like, yeah, that's not going to really. Yeah, he's not. Marriage material. Yeah, he's not bringing a lot to the table. He's not a value add situation. No, he doesn't work. Yeah. His parents give him an allowance. And he starts this affectation where in order to compensate for his height, he buys boots, black boots, like Mm -hmm. cycle boots. He buys them or two or three sizes too big and stuffs them with paper and rags and tin cans. Wow. When he walks around, people said he looked like a demented Santa Claus. Like he just (laughs) couldn't keep his balance. Okay. Dude, just wear heels. Just Just wear heels. Lifts. They had them in the back of the Or who cares? Or who cares? Just Just make it your thing. 
Just be a fucking short king, man.